1940s New York was a sonically rich scene. Dixieland and swing jazz permeated the airwaves. But there was something else on the rise at this time, too. I'm speaking about experimental classical music, particularly that composed by John Cage. John Cage, the American experimental composer, was largely unknown when he arrived in New York in 1943. He had grown up on the West Coast and even studied for a short time with Arnold Schoenberg. In the interim, he became very interested in found sounds. By found sounds, I mean that Cage became interested in making music with everyday objects. So he began to put on uh, and to compose percussion pieces for a whole array of everyday objects like anvils, rice bowls, gongs, <laughs> sheet metal, uh, very strange and unusual sounds. When Cage came to New York in 1943, he put on a concert uh, of these found sound percussion works at the Museum of Modern Art. So probably the premier modern art institution, perhaps in the world at that time. Uh, and I'd like to just play you a short excerpt of a piece that Cage played on that concert. It's called First Construction in Metal. Just give me one minute to cue it up here. So this is First Construction in Metal by John Cage premiered at MoMA in 1943. <laughs> for Peggy Guggenheim's home for the entryway of her house. Peggy Guggenheim also helped Cage greatly when he came to New York. So she served as a common link and introduced Pollock and Cage both to museum and gallery owners, critics, and fellow artists. So Cage, after the MoMA show, really became ensconced in this abstract expressionist circle in New York. And he met painters including Robert Rauschenberg, Cy Twombly, Jasper Johns, and Jackson Pollock. So Cage and Pollock knew each other. They did not get along. They were not friends. But nevertheless, their art proceeded in very parallel directions. Cage, of course, began with this found sound percussion and then moved to the prepared piano, and then eventually began incorporating chants and aleatory elements into